Lisa Salander in net. And for the Buffalo Buttes, it's going to be Maria Fujimagari getting the start in net on the back end. Going to be pairing Marie Jo Peltier along with Iveta Klimasova. And up front taking the face off, it's going to be McPherson versus Dempsey. Puck hits the sheet, and we are underway for the home opener in here in Boston. So Leotis trying to get the puck out of her skates. A good tie up there with Stacy, but here comes McPherson right into the zone. Quick shot in on Salander. Gets turned wide. Back to the point now. Peltier looks to get it farther down low to the circle. And coming back up top with it, McPherson couldn't get a shot through the low slot. And now a good breakout chance is racing to get that puck quickly as Putinia. She's on the left wing. Looks to feed Brand in front of the middle. Couldn't get her backhand on it, but now a quick shot. Snared up by Fujimagari. A good try there from Fratkin. So far we've seen pretty good action. It looked like the puck got a little bit stuck just beyond that blue line, but then once both teams got moving, they, they got buzzing here. So I'm expecting a good game here today, Sam. Should be a good one so far. Another offensive zone draw for the pace off. The Mary Parker line is going to get out there now. And we'll try to battle for it in the corner. Boston wins it back. Just kept into the zone there. And it's going to be sent across to the left wing now. Rail will backhand it behind the net. Looking to go and get it now, Tori Sullivan. She circles back to the blue line, has Bender to her right, couldn't quite get it to her, will instead circle all by herself. Now goes farther down low in the circle, will switch places now with Parker, tries to get into the middle. Bender was racing for it there as well as Sullivan, poked at the side of the net by Parker, but snared by Fujimagari. That was a good read by Fujimagari. That puck kind of popped out to her glove side, and she had to shuffle across to make sure she covered the near post, but she was up to the task. Definitely up to the task so far, and he's a goaltender who's faced quite a plethora of shots just in her career. Once faced 73 shots in her collegiate career, so she's no stranger to a tall task there. As Brown looking to take it up, gets run into by Sullivan. Buffalo just trying to control back in their own end now. And can't quite get it out as Rail almost fanned on a shot there to try to keep it in the blue line. And pacing all over her there was Bustad. Pride able to get that puck back. And now circling within her own end as we're about a minute and a half through period number one. Still no score here at Warrior Ice Arena. Now it's sent back into the end. Fujimagari trying to play it off of her own net there. But behind the cage reaching for it was Lexi Lang. And now Sullivan again has it in the corner. Will backhand it through. Gets it ahead to Carly Tate. She will circle with her backhand. Watch closely there by Buffalo. And they're able to strip the puck away. Or the Buttes can't get it out of the zone. No, it's just in by Lauren Kelly. Two assists. Last game, she fires a high shot. And Fuji Magari had to duck for that one. And now Brand back to Kelly. She again winds up the slap shot. Tipped off. Went behind Fuji Magari. Did that attempt from Dempsey. Pride still buzzing, though. Another backhanded try there. From Boutinia, and it comes out in the net now off its moorings. So a good plethora, especially a backhanded shots there by the Pride. Not afraid of really charging that Buffalo cage early. Fujimagari got a little bit of help there from it. Looks like the inside part of the post, but doesn't get doesn't get across the goal line quite. And then you see that the, the goal post comes off its moorings, and we have a face-off here. But also we know we, we are seeing some lags. I'm seeing the comments here. We'll try and get that fixed for you. And Pride now with control. Back at the point. Soliotis. A good move there to get farther in. Fires from the circle into the pads. Rebound by. Couldn't be gotten there by Emily Fluke. Again making her debut with this team after being acquired. As Wolfiler will try to get it wide in. Now a two on one. It's given to Mary Parker. Shoot! And just wide of the net. Nearly a two on oh there. As another good forechecking play, but here come the Buttes trying to take it back up again, but they won't go much farther than center ice. Here comes Emily Fluke back in, chipping the puck there around the Sheriff. And now it's gotten back. Two on two back the other way. Stacy scored a goal in that opener against the Connecticut Whale as she tries to take the puck away to Fracken. Puck stuck behind the end of the cage, and Fracken will go in to collect it. Backhands it out of trouble now. And the pride we saw this in their game against the Riveters, really a feeling out process for about the first period and a half, and then we're unfortunately playing behind in the third, so they definitely don't want to get behind early, looking much stronger on the forecheck so far. That's a really good point, Sam. We know that this is a team that has stayed pretty well intact compared to some others. As a quick turnaround try there, couldn't quite be gotten by Bowie. It's gonna be counted on to be one of the offensive leaders. That's a big shove there from the captain. Again, showing her authority. 
just to go back to that thought. But to your point, Sam, it would be great to see the Boston Pride establish themselves early in this game. And try to feed it out in front there once again was Taylor Accursi, another one of the youth returning to this team. They don't have a lot of that star power from last season, but still playing just as well as ever. As again, a Kersey slap shot. Couldn't be gotten on the rebound there. Now trying to race up the right wing in a good battle there and almost tripped up was Ray Elt. Now at the middle of the ice, Sullivan has it. Asking for that pass was McKenna Brand, but it couldn't quite be got to her. Now it's intercepted by Sheriff. She goes into the Boston end and shot from Brown right into the glove and held by Solander. Yes, and it is indeed Lavisa Solander in net again for the Boston Pride, and it's Mariah Fujimagari in net for the Buffalo Buttes. We do know that there is a little bit of a lag on the video. We are trying to troubleshoot that, but we're going to stay here on the call, and uh, we'll, get, we'll take a look at that. We have some folks working on video right now. Face off to the blocker side right that the Pride are able to win. Try to be banked off of the wall. Now a big stretch pass, going to cancel out that icing. Putinho, she's right at the side of the net, tried to poke it home. Dempsey gets the rebound, and down low, but tripping over that puck there was Bran, and now it comes out. Whitney Wren wasn't quite sure if she should touch it up. And now going back the other way, here's Bustad and Brown. Brown sends it into the middle, but to the corner now, only collected by Lauren Kelly. About five minutes through period number one now. Just trying to get collected there. Buffalo at center ice. Trying to go back into the end, and looks like Wren is going to make that a call for icing. So thank you for all those joining us on Twitch. Again, we are working on the, the video issues that we're having, but Sam and I are going to try and keep you up on the action as we get ready for a face-off here to the left-hand side of Fujimagari. And it can be one. Now Boston takes it back to the point. A slap shot there by Suliotis. Three not try again. Fujimagari stops it. Couldn't get it out to this circle. Two great point blank saves there by Fujimagari. But Boston still with control. Cloak stretching for it to get it back to Suliotis. She goes point to point to Fratkin. Top of the circle fires a shot only off of the shins there. And Fratkin again down low. Mary Parker trying to work with She's at the top of the slot. Asking for it down low was Fluke again. Gets it to Wolfweiler but the save made Fujimagari. And she has really been tested early. We don't have an official shots on net just yet, but I think it's fair to say that Fujimagari has had more shots faced than, than we see for Salander so far in this game. So Boston is on that attack, Sam, like you talked about earlier, really trying to assert themselves early in this game. And another offensive zone draw that the Pride are able to win. They've been doing very well for that so far. Down low, circled around and trying to get it back out in front was Lang. Couldn't get control of the puck there now, and taking it back out will be Peltier. Tries to send it up ice, but again, Bender collects that pass. Lang will go back into the offensive zone on the right wing. Now gets some room off the wall, comes in for the circle, but again, unable to finish that one right in front of the net was Sullivan. And just chance after chance, but Fujimagari ready for all of them. She may have a repeat of that 73 save performance she had in her collegiate career at this rate. But now a Kersey, some room on the left wing, comes into the circle, good two on one, passing, trying to go, forehand, backhand there, did Bowie, but Solander kept up with her the whole way. Kareen really trying to get something on net and just had that puck slip off her stick. And in there just a little bit too early was Lexi Lang, so we got a stoppage with 13.32 to go in period number one. I'm taking a look at these comments here, and let me tell you, fans, I definitely had some words in the first uh, game chat about there being no Connecticut whale uh, emoji. What's up with that? we got to get that fixed. Surely there's got to be a whale emoji <laughs> in there. You have something for everyone else in the league. Well, not an official logo. I'm sure there's a whale in there somewhere. As here comes Dempsey, drops it back off for Brand, trying to get it again. A rebound comes free. They have been all juicy around Fujimagari, but just can't quite get it finished. And again, right out in front and unable to finish was Putinia. Unable to just be kept in at the line. And out of the back. Comes back around 
looking for Buffalo control. Just under 13 minutes to go now in the period. And now it comes back in. Again, control, backhander, what a save, Puji Magari. How many more chances can she keep out? As Kelly again circles it around the boards, gotten by Dempsey, she backhands it free now. She and Putina try to play a little bit of the catch, finally gathered up by Buffalo, rims around the boards, but held in there by Kelly once again. She's an expert at that, she fires a shot, patted aside by Fujimagari again. And it has been all Buffalo the last few minutes as 12.26, another one comes out right in front of the net, that one held in by Fluke, the clearing attempt. And again, sent right to the front of the cage, went off of the body there of delay, and again circled in. As Buffalo able to make a change, some tired Buffalo legs on the ice here. Still with control of it is Mary Parker. 12 minutes ago, Fratkin trying to send it down from the wall now. Fluke has it behind the cage. We'll get it free now to Wolfiler. She circles around, another defensive change made for the Pride right off of the bench. Here comes Soliotis. She sends it over to the opposite circle for Fratkin. She gets the backhand down low. Again, no one was quite home as everyone jostling for position in the low slot. Finally, Buffalo able to get it free. But Pride, again, take it right back in. Soliotis, some nifty moves from the circle just wide of the cage. Fujimagari was ready for it. Comes right back out. Parker tried to make a good move. As 11 and a half minutes to go, finally a good possible odd woman rush there. McPherson trying to go on the left wing, but she's almost ridden into the boards there by Fratkin. Still looking for our first goal of this game, but the chances have all been with the pride so far, Erica. Absolutely. Fuji Magar keeping her team in this game. And you see that so far the Pride have just been able to really have their way in all three zones, I'd say, Sam. And again, they have it in the offensive zone. Wolf Eiler, again, circling around, waiting for those reinforcements to come off the bench. She holds it, and right on cue, here comes Lexi Bender from the circle, only went off of the chest there of one player. Rebound again comes out. And Sullivan couldn't quite get it. Yeah, lots of block shots in front, uh, but... With that said, there's still plenty that are getting through to Fujimagari and the Buffalo Buttes. If they keep, um, you know, getting hemmed in, they're going to really be tired by the end of this game. And a full change made is Lexi Lang going to take the face off there against Bowering. Looks like we're going to get that as a redo, which gives me an opportunity to let everyone know that Lexi Lang, the third of all three Lang sisters to play for the Boston Pride. And on that point, I will say, if you're new to women's hockey or the NWHL and haven't looked up the story of her older sister, Denna, definitely do so, read into it. It is truly one of the most inspiring sports stories I've read in a long time. That's right, always present with this Boston Pride team as turn number 24, which she wore here for Boston on the helmets of not only the Pride players, but of all the players in the NWHL traditionally. And we're able to win that Isabel Cup in that season. They really did it for her that year. As the puck goes in, Salander out of the trapezoid and trying to collect it once again as Bowering couldn't tend it to the front of the net. A Kersey almost got a shot off there. As we're now at the halfway point of number one, 10 minutes to go, still no score. But again, not for a lack of trying from both of these teams. A lot more chances have been with Boston so far. And again at the wall, lots of players shoveling. Shoving for position as Rail. We'll get it back and circle behind her net as an earful change is made for Buffalo. She gets a good stretch pass up the left wing. Into the zone comes Futinia. Trying to go for the front of the net and almost checked right in there by Birdsall. And the Butte's able to take it back. Again with 9.35 to go. Again, just the hold-ins is one area that the Pride have been doing so well. And whenever the Buttes try to clear, even though they may build up with speed, the defensive effort Austin really showing right now. It's a team effort right now. It's to keep that puck in their offensive zone and just really not even allow the Buttes to breathe, it seems. And again, they don't allow them to do so as the captain, Jillian Dempsey, keeps it in. Collected there by Birdsall, and she will try to bring it out to her teammate. Almost chipped ahead as avoiding a collision there was Klimasova, and that's going to be the first penalty of the game assessed to Boston. And you just see in that play how physical Boston is playing. Uh, you know, Klimasova... Maybe could have stayed on her skates there, but wanted to definitely draw attention to the physicality of the Boston Pride. And you know what? That is a smart hockey play. Smart one to make, so that's going to take us to a timeout here. 
And again, we want to thank everyone that is watching on Twitch. Uh, make sure that you are engaging with us. I understand from the comments that we are going to get, I believe it's an emote. I'm learning these things, not an emoji, but uh, pretty much serves this. So the first Buffalo power play of the game, Boston, the penalty kill was really their strong suit in that game against the Rivers, went five for six. But um, special teams, I would imagine, Paul Mara working on uh, in the practice this weekend, they were five for six on the penalty kill in that game for the Rivers, but also when they got their woman advantages, went 0 for five. So the Buttes looking to strike first here. With a quick shot fired there by Klimasova, went wide. And so sitting in the box, two minutes. As that one's snared up by Solander. Nice little flick of the wrist there that had the crowd cheering. Gotta love that, scooping it up. Still has those red trim pads from the RTI days. As again, a win back to Klimasova. Tries to get it back to the point, almost broken up there by Lang, and she's able to fish that puck back out to center ice. So 8.39 to go in period number one, a minute and a half still remaining on this Buffalo Buttes power play. Uh, we do apologize for a couple of the issues we had with uh, the clock. I know it's been somewhat affected by our lag, but we've got all the professional minds we can working on it, and we will continue to stay on the call here with you. As again, one flip to the right wing. Stacy trying to gather it up and does so. Watched closely by Rail, trying to get the pass free and gets it back to the point now. Down low from the half wall. Rail able to bank it. And Lang finishes the job, and now trying to go in shorthanded Wolfiler. Can she possibly making, make something happen? Turns on her backhand, tries to get it out, but Kelly wasn't quite beyond the blue line, and Wolfiler thought she had touched up, but Kelly in just a tad early. Yes, indeed, just missed out on that. Just for everyone watching at home, do want to reemphasize something, and thanks for those in the comments taking care of this. But Aaron Gian is wearing number six for the Buffalo Buttes this evening and Rochelle Skarbowski wearing number 18. So those are not their numbers listed on the roster, but they are wearing six and 18. That's Ian and Skarbowski for the Buttes. And look at a possible two on one here. Pass could have, be, could have gotten to a Kersey and now she will go into the near side corner and try and get that puck once again. A Kersey able to get it out. Plays catch and now it goes back up the wall intended for Peltier. Good on the four check there and able to clear it out was Emily Pluka now racing after it, Mary Parker. 25 seconds left on this power play now. 7.27 to go in period number one. And again, just dished down to Fujimagari's net by the pride as they will make a full change to their penalty killing unit. And now the captain, Bowie, taking it all by herself through center. Gets over the blue line, pestered closely there by Taves. Was almost able to take the puck away from her. And now it goes back to the wall, into the final two seconds and one, and out of the box now comes Soliotis. Back to even strength hockey with seven minutes to go in the period. And now a big stretch pass intended for Brand. Puck now goes to the left wing. Brand able to pick it up off of a favorable bounce. Tried to center it there for Taves, and again gets it back. Sullivan wasn't quite ready for it if she had got her forehand on that puck. Could have been a golden opportunity for the Pride. And i got to give props to Peltier, who anticipated that and was able to get that slider block. Sliding block, I should say. And again goes down the ice. Now the Buttes trying to apply that good forecheck pressure that Boston has been killing them with. But now back into the zone. Goes right into the middle for Brand. She skipped it just past the left pad of Fujimagari. Boston still with control, though, as they're trying to change a few skaters. It's the Dempsey line now out there, and Putinia will collect it from off the far side half wall. Tries to send it down low. Only went off of the body there. Bustad now able to get it for Buffalo and goes up the wing. And really showing that speed game. And now going down ice, Kim Brown. The 22-year-old out of Brock University. And has to retreat now. 
Coming right back in, Orzachowski, she fires a shot. Now Gowden once again to Stacey. She's got that big body against Hackin. The two of them not afraid to be physical whatsoever as Brand trying to staple it against the board. And now Buffalo finally gets it free. Back out to the point. Going D to D. Bird's all there to delay. And now it goes back one again. Found there as a shot just missed by Klimasova. Buffalo really buzzing now as McPherson tries to get the forehand shot off. Blocked by Dempsey and the pride will finally clear back to center. Another good stretch pass. Comes out to McGinn and Brand. Almost had it at the circle. But a good defensive play to go right back up was Ruggiero. I'm sorry, that was delay. And she will get in just a little bit early, so we get a stoppage with 5.13 to go in period number one. Still waiting for our first score, but Buffalo, a really good pushback there. Probably the best they've had in the game so far. I think so, and, you know, I thought they looked good on the power play for a Boston team that was really dominating at even strength. The Buttes were able to disrupt and even um, control the puck on that penalty kill on their part. And Emily Fluke up the left wing, tried to chip it into the center for Wolf Eiler. Couldn't quite be gotten to her. And Boston forced to retreat back to center ice. Really being pushed back into their own end by what you would call the dice scheme out there on the ice. A 2-1-2 set up. As Buffalo really trying to collect that puck now. And they get to it at center. So 4.47 to go. And coming right back in, powering, firing a shot just wide. Now it goes into the near side corner. Kersey trying to get it out. Again, collected by Bowering for Buffalo. Now Bowie will try to get it from the likes of both Whitney Wren and Kelly. And now Boston coming up with numbers. A possible three on two of their hurry. Dropped back by Parker. And now into the middle. Wolfheiler only went off of the body. Great defensive play there by Peltier. Once again, getting the body down and sacrificing. She's got two solid blocks that we've seen so far. Probably more. And now Rayal trying to hand it in for Lang, but the pass was ahead of her. Goes into the far side corner now. Buffalo will collect. We've got four minutes to go in period number one. Again, can't be flipped out as Carly Taves keeps that one down low and in. Now she's double teamed by a couple of Buttes players, Sheriff and Bustad. She has Rayal trying to help it out. Ref signaling them to move the puck. Still stapled against the far side boards. No one quite able to dig it free. And now there the puck comes and Buffalo gains control. And again, good body-on-body -body pressure as Sullivan is able to take that one. She and Bender had almost the same play, just getting their bodies right in there to interrupt that clearing attempt. And now along the board, Taves gets it down to Lang. Lang, the former Harvard product, switches places there with Rayold. She goes around. She's watched closely by Sheriff. And the Buttes able to take control once again, but the clearing attempt goes high into the netting. So a stoppage with 321 to go in period number one. Again, we want to thank everyone for watching on Twitch TV. Of course, any subscriptions and support that you give to the NWHL on Twitch, 50% of that goes directly back to the players. So you're helping the players, you're helping the league. We thank you for those who have already subscribed and those that are to come. Which for the head honchos of the office, the Anya Packers of the world doing so much with the players, that is always so good to see. There's another offensive zone draw here for the try. They will try to run it back quickly to Boutinia. And now Soliotis from the point. Down low, but the puck skips past Brand. So now Dempsey will try and get it into the corner there. Watch closely there by Peltier. Falls down, and that's going to be a trick call. Sets to Buffalo. So towards the end here, period number one, it's going to be the first Boston power play of the evening with 3.10 to go. And as we get close here to the end of period number one, we want to ask our Twitch viewers, we want to get you involved. Who do you think your players of the periods, uh, for uh, who your players of the periods have been for both teams so far? Yes, definitely want to hear that. And I'm going to do this because Sam probably won't. Thank you for giving a shout out to Sam on play by play. They like your radio style. I do appreciate the style. It is the background I come from. and. Some fans may not like him when you talk constantly, but that's the world I was raised in. As Suliotis across there, big slap shot from Pratkin. You know she's got one of the most deadly in the NWHL. She wears the A for good reason. So Hurler and Suliotis, the first defensive pair and the first trio of forwards, that top line for the pride. That's Dempsey, Brand, and Putinia. And as we mentioned, that last game for the Riveters, 0 for 5, so they want to try to Picks up that cleanliness right here as the Buttes get another quick clear. So 2.25 to go in period number one. one thirteen left. Power play is, again, it's dumped in deep. Just not quite getting connected to the pride, but now they will be able to set up. 
Back to the point. Haley Franklin walking a line. She makes a little catch with Soliotis. And now Brand also looking for some room. She gets to the front of the net. Bad angle try there by Dempsey. Couldn't poke it home as Fujimagari was ready, and she covers. And just a reminder, we are asking for the players that you think have had the, the most impact in this first period. I think it, you're hard-pressed to not get a few votes for Mariah Fujimagari. Absolutely. The amount of saves she's made so far, again, we don't have the official number in front of us, but those goalie statistics, I would have to say at least a good maybe 16 by now as Lauren Kelly winds up and slaps her rebound, came out dangerously in the blue paint as Mary Parker was raiding for it, but Fuji Magari again sees it just a hair for that Boston forward. Right on cue for us. We've got to love when that happens. Fuji Magari was tracking that shot, but then it got deflected and slowed down, so she was able to cover up just before Parker, as you said, got to it. And I will say Mary Parker has definitely been a player who's impressed me so far through this season. Only had three points the entirety of last year, and she's definitely been asked to take on a bigger workload for the Pride this season. You see her on the power play unit and already contributing in the assist factor for that Rivers category. As we get down to 20 seconds left on this power play, but I think that's a really good observation. But Parker was really someone that Paul Mara a lot would talk to us about, about being an impact player and, and liked getting her into the lineup and, and making sure that she was able to contribute to this team. And when you can have a player that's that well talked about, especially given how deep the pride just were last year, forget this year, and now you get her into a more active role, she can really show that better side of her game to everyone in the NWHL. I'm also going to give a shout out to, to Peltier here. Now she's wearing an A in her rookie season. That alone should catch your eye, but she's had three significant blocks here. The last one right here on the power play for the Buffalo Buttes. Using that frame of hers very well, the former UNH product was a captain there for her senior year, so certainly knows these parts very well. As out of the box comes Brown, and a scramble for it still in front of the net. Fuji Magari doesn't see it, trying to poke up, and they score! With just a minute and one second left in period number one, it was the scramble that Fuji Magari had been collecting so well earlier in the period. Almost looked like that drill the players do in warm-ups where everyone just pokes away for it <laughs> until you wait for the goalie to give one up. And yep. the Pride just never giving up on the play there. And they have a one nothing lead. Good on the Pride to stick with that. But that was tough for Fuji Magari. It was tough for Fuji Magari because she had all the players on top of the puck right in front of her. And I believe that's going to be Lexi Lang officially credited for that goal. As we get down to the final minute here. And Pride not done yet. Looking to take it back in. That one's past Bender and now possibly a two on one. Stacy coming with Klimasova. Couldn't quite get it to her. Was too high for the pass to be received. And Langer first goal again. A good crossing pass that Klimasova was ready for. But now the Pride take it back the other way. Going into the middle now. Brandt gets it away to Dempsey. On her forehand blocker save. Fuji Magari. And that is one very dangerous shot for her to block. As the Pride captain came in there with a the last chance. 20 seconds to go now in period number one. As Bender trying to get it up and ahead up at the right wing, taken now by Akersi. She's got McPherson to her right, will try to circle around Bender at the far side. Now behind the net, almost switched to her backhand and cleared out. And that should do it for period number one or no. They will call an icing, so an offensive zone draw for the Buttes. And they will try to draw up one of those quick battle plans with 2.8 seconds left. So we know that Lexi Lang was able to get the Boston Pride on the, on the board here. Hopefully that goal will get up on the scoreboard. But want to give a shout out to Denna Lang. We gave her a shout out earlier, and she is here. You might see on the screen once we get back to over where Fuji Magari is, but she's along the boards. Uh, looks like with a few members of the Lang family taking in as it stands right now, this 1-0 Boston Pride lead. And she got a great view of her younger sister's goal, there, and that remains the lone goal of this game as we head to the end of the period number one. And for all our fans watching on Twitch, it is up, still waiting for the official scoreboard here at Warrior Ice Arena to reflect that. But for the most part, Erica, I think you can say a period where Boston definitely had control. You saw um, pushback, especially on the power play, and a couple of those shifts around the 7-6 
six-minute mark for Buffalo really getting into this game. And I don't think they haven't been down, but uh, the X factor here, as I'm sure many of our fans on Twitch in the comments will agree, Rhea Fujimagari, what a show so far. My goodness, yes, absolutely. And again, as we were saying right before we were getting the word that Denno was here, Fujimagari, that first, that first goal, as we get the official goal uh, call there, um, she just had so many players right in front of her, and it looked like the, the puck got a little bit frozen on the ice there right in front of her, didn't know which way she needed to move. But again, the Boston Pride able to take advantage of that to get the lead. And 18.59, the official time of the goal for Lexi Lane. The shots on goal through the first period. Astonishing to say the least, Boston leading 19 to four in that category as Maria Fujimagari really earning her keep. Team switch sides of the ice, puck is dropped and we are underway. Boston again controlling off of the opening faceoff. And Bracken trying to get it into the middle of the brand. And I noticed in the first period is that she was really that forward meant to kind of cherry pick and really collect those stretch passes given her speed. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously that, you know, voted well for the Boston Pride in years past. So um, Brand looking for her second goal of the season. And Boston trying to take a control off the wall behind the net, Putinia. Watched closely there by Cassidy McPherson. And trying to strip her of the puck as well as Kermova. And Boston Pride finally relinquish effort. Puck goes all the way down into Salander's end. She will touch up and pass it off for Fratkin. So near full change made for Buffalo is again a big switch pass. Tries to go to Putinia, but she will go off at the end of her shift. Now coming right back up ice, Becky Bowering out of the University of Toronto. Will send it to the opposite wing, Delay trying to get in, but couldn't get past beyond. And now Parker, again good on the four checks, trying to strip the puck from Bower. And Boston does take away now. And up to Emily Fluke, again playing her first game for the Boston Pride, the former captain of the Connecticut Whale. And has shown up pretty well so far, especially on the defensive end. I think absolutely. She's picking up where she left off. Of course, she'll have to break herself in a new team, but we know what Emily Fluke can do in the NWHL. And now coming up the left wing, Fluke right on cue, gets it ahead for Wolf Eiler, trying to make some room for herself and cut in with a backhand almost to the forehand. She just slams into delay there, trying to charge the net on Fujimagari and almost kept control of the puck there as well. So two minutes through period number two now. Boston with a one nothing lead to Parker again, tries to take it away as the Buttes cannot clear. Held in by Mastel, trying to get it to the top there for Fluke. She plays a little catch and now goes back behind the net. Parker, as well as Wolfiler, fighting for the puck. Parker tried to backhand it out of trouble, but delay was right in front of her, but now Parker gets it back. Couple little deeks back to the point. Mastel wants a shot, gets it right to the side of that, wide open and somehow kept out by Fuji Magari as waiting with a near wide open net was Mary Parker. She also got some support from her defense there because, yes, she definitely bit on that. She took a bite, I should say, on that first deke, um, but her defense was there to be supportive. And the trap defense almost got a good two-on-one chance again for Boston, but taking it back the other end, Bustad couldn't quite get across the line. Boston will take it back the other way just as quickly. Sent all the way down, trying to cancel out icing there with Sullivan. But they whistled it. And we'll go back down to the Boston end. 17-15 to go now in period number two. And we apologize. We understand there's still some glitches on the video. Sam and I will continue to relay the information as we have our camera person, um, of course, trying to capture wh what they can. So stick with us here on Twitch. And Lexi Lang, the Boston goal scorer, trying to that puck at center ice. And it's chipped back up. Taves chips it into the offensive zone. Sullivan looking for a pass as Lang on the left wing, but instead will circle back with it. Goes back to Fratkin, fires a high shot only off of the body. Rebound try, trying to be gotten by Taves, couldn't quite do so. And Buffalo again just struggling to clear those pucks out of the zone. Part of the reason why they were so heavily outshot through period number one as Sullivan again takes it back from the half wall. Looking for Lang, but now we'll send it back up top. Fratkin again sends it through a bunch of traffic, only goes right to the side of Bustad. She will get it out to Sheriff. Looking to rush up now, cuts to the middle, couldn't get a forehand shot off as Fratkin was all over her. And Butte's trying to make something happen in the offensive end. Sheriff again tries to get the puck as Fratkin goes down. She was looking for, I think, a hooking call there. She won't get one. 
As a Butte still just trying to circle there at center ice and get Hawks up. As Brooke Stacy has it in and now switches to the opposite end and firing a quick shot there, Kimasova. And now taken right back the other end. McPherson tried to get it to Klimasova, but now Fracken will go back out. And to the left wing. Sullivan watched there. Along the half wall, we'll rim it around and stapled into the board there was Brand in a good battle there with Kermova. And now Brand down low, tried to backhand it out of trouble. Almost a good pass there. Suliotis tied up Klimasova. And she and Kermova actually the first two Slovaks to play in the NWHL, both of them on the team for Buffalo, as Boston still buzzing in the offensive end. Sent down half wall, Putinia tried to center it out in front, but Dempsey Brand couldn't get in there fast enough, and it's covered by Fuji Magari. And so far, I think it's been more of the same that we saw in the first period, that being that Boston is really dominating. I think that when we see the Buffalo Buttes have an opportunity, they just can't seem to collect the puck in front of them. It, it's in the skates, it's behind them. They've got to clean that up. And every single battle defensively for Boston has been a woman-on-woman -woman battle. As soon as someone gets the puck, they charge right in to try to pick it out of there with the sticks, and they've been doing it very, very effectively as Wolfheiler, almost a good stick move going into the middle, but she met the body of Bowie, and now racing after that puck, Taylor Akersey. She turns on the Jets, gets it at the near side wall. Looking for a centering pass, will instead just drop it off there for Bowering. Bowering trying to move farther in, gets it to the wall. Birds all trying to make a good move there, gets it to Bowie, had some room for the circle. Solander save with the pad. Rebound comes out to Bowie, she dishes it back to Bowering once again. 14.39 to go in period number two. Buttes trying to tie it up. And they're in the offensive zone now. Bowie throws on the brakes to try to get around Kelly. Just going around the horn now, our Buffalo. Bowering keeping it on her backhand away from the checking Parker. She almost took that puck out of the zone. Now looking for a stretch pass. Fluke will get it up and ahead. And coming in with a lot of speed, Lexi Bender off of the bench. Almost got it through, but Delay able to stick that puck away from her. And it goes all the way back down into the Boston end as icing going to be called here with 14.05 to go in the period. And just looking at that last shift on a replay here for Buffalo, really forced to stick to that outside perimeter by the Buffalo defenders. Again, getting right in there in their bodies, taking away every single center lane. And without that, the Buttes just haven't been able to get anything going. And that's when you, you know that this team has focused on you know what they like to call team defense. Everyone is getting involved every play. I mean, you'd think that all they have up on the board is get the puck by any means necessary. And again, from last year, unlike many teams in the league of at least the starting seven, you would call it for the Boston Pride, four of them back from last season. And that's a good a rush difference. in for Buffalo, but now look out. One one for Boston. It's Taves. It's Lang. It's Sullivan. Catch with the other side of the net. Backhand and they score. Tick tack toe and then some for the Boston Pride as the trio of Taves, Lang, and Sullivan were in there and on the doorstep for her first of the game. She had an assist on the first goal. It's going to be Carly Taves, you the product of UNH. The recipient of that fine, beautiful pass, and it's 2 0 Pride with 13 35 in the period. You said it, Sam. Tic tac toe is right. As we see Denna Lang celebrate again, she's down by that goal side of Fujimagari. But my goodness, Fujimagari was in position. She's getting moved around, something that Connecticut did not do last week. We talked about that on the broadcast. And she actually was able to get a save, but it's that rebound that comes out, and then there's a pride player on the far post. They actually made an additional pass before Taves got that goal, the second goal of the game and the second goal for the pride. And again, a gr you said a great job by Fujimagari keeping up that puck, but when you have three forwards all around you, as soon as you get down into that butterfly position, it doesn't matter what you do with the T-push, you're leaving a huge chunk of the net exposed and Boston able to take advantage. Looks like Lexi Lang gets the primary assist on that, so she's having a good game. A two-point night now for both her and Carly Taves. They've each got a goal and an assist as a hard hit applied there. At the center of the ice, it looked like that was Klima Sova, so she will head to the sin bin. And just when Boston went up 2-0, another golden opportunity for them 
to get yet another. They're 0 for 1 on the power play so far tonight, but as we've said many times before, just dominating in the shots category. And again, this is going to be a time where the Buttes are going to have to really dig deep, Sam. They've been put to the test. They look tired coming off the ice after the first period. They've got to start changing some things up. And immediately their penalty kill starts very well as they clear it right off of the draw. That's Sheriff there. And they're going to need to find something, you know, change things up just enough. And here comes Lauren Kelly, one of their big quarterbacks on the power play, streaks in with a lot of speed. We'll turn all the way around the horn, and now we'll drop it off to the point for Bender. And Kelly and Bender, we saw a lot of this pair doing great work last season as they continue to play very effectively together here to start this power play. 12.15 to go in period number two as another good clear all the way down the full 200 feet for the Buttes. And Bender will touch up, gets it free to Sullivan. Comes up the right wing as Parker to her left. Tried to get into the middle for her, just touched out of there and almost held by Suliotis right on the blue line, but has to get it back to Bender. Looks for a good stretch pass as reinforcements come off the bench. And cross-checking the official call for Klimasova there. As the Buttes look much more organized so far on this power play, getting pucks back to center ice. But now right as I say that, Taves again trying a centering pass down low for Lexi Lang. That's been the duo all night. They've accounted for both Boston goals. But now Soliotis walking the blue line. Down low to Lang, top of the circle, back to Lang, shoots it, rebound, almost came out once again. Lexi Lang having herself an evening so far, going right to the front of the net. Well, you know, in basketball we like to say shoot or shoot. I'd say it's the same for hockey. And when players are feeling it, they go. As a good pass again ahead by Lang, almost a two on one, couldn't be gotten to the stick blade of Sullivan, only got to her escape, but again she tries a chance right in front and Buffalo can't clear. Final five seconds of the power play here. Teeing up a shot, Frecken goes high, just wide of the glove side of Fujimagari and out of the box comes Klimasova, back to even strength with 10.45 to go in the period. And from the wall, Boston still buzzing with control. Brand tried to take that puck away there from delay. She will get a good stretch pass only as far as center as Bratkins getting her teammates to touch up. And now the pride head right back in. This is an important game note for those listening at home. I'm right here. There's a staff member by me has some lobsters in her hand. So I think you're getting that lobster lob pretty soon here. Never want to get between any New Englanders and lobster. I've learned that in just my brief time living here. <laughs> As Jillian Dempsey gets it back to the point for Massell. She has a ton of room. She fires through traffic. Rebound comes out to Brand. Tried to get it with the backhand. Fujimagari kept up with it. Puck loose behind the cage. And if not for Maria Fujimagari, we could be looking at a 5 or 6 nothing game right now. There's been plenty of goals scored already today in the NWHL, but indeed Fujimagari is holding up her end of the bargain for the Buffalo Buttes. And Buffalo again trying to push it ahead. Brooks Stacy trying to just push Taves off of her. Right there as gets it at the near side. Well, McKenna Brand again just shoves that puck out of the way as pretty much all Pride players have been doing to the view. So bad angle shot right into the gut of Fujimagari and she'll hold it. And a stoppage with 9.32 to go in period number two as we get our media timeout for the Lobster Lob. Indeed, here we go. Legal seafoods, of course. Oh, look at that. Haley Moore getting into the action. Haley Moore. First general manager of the Boston Pride, served as deputy director of the WHL, and now is the president under new ownership of the Boston Pride. So she comes back to the team in a new role. And I couldn't think of a better candidate, to be honest with you, for this Boston team. More. So much great work in the front office for the entirety of the NWHL, but she's always had roots in this Boston community, always been very involved with this team, and to see her placed in that position and for the league as a whole to get so many more women in these powerful positions of presidencies for the teams, GMs of these organizations, it goes a long way for that growth of the league. Absolutely, you said it so well, Sam. I think that's a part of, as someone who covers exclusively women's sports, something that we really like to see is women being not just, you know, quote unquote, given an opportunity, but seen as valuable, as having value added to sports. And so I'm very proud to be among one of those women that helped in this particular case, the NWHL.
Stride going to take the draw here and win it. And from the half wall, Fluke trying to get it down low as Lauren Kelly fires a shot. That goes a bit wide. Tried to get it out in front of Wolfiler. And for our fans watching on Twitch TV, we got 9-11 to go in period number two now. Still a 2-0 Boston lead. But Buffalo there in the offensive end now. The captain, Bowie, trying to get it right out in front of Bowering. She was at the right side of the net, and again she gets it down low on the forehand. Salander saw it and was able to cover up those pads quickly. And Boston digs it back out to Sender. Bender just over the blue line, couldn't quite hit Sullivan with that pass. I'm sorry, Wolfiler. And Bowie looking for that stretch pass. We'll finally get it to the right wing as a Kersey dumps it in so Buffalo can make a change to all five of their skaters. And that, I think, has also been the key. Boston has charged in with a lot of that support game going multiple forwards at a time and, unfortunately, a little more of just that dump and chase game to get fresh legs on the ice for Buffalo. Unfortunately, that's kind of what they've kind of had to do here, Sam, because they're not really able to establish anything. As right out in front, Lawson inter skates Lang had it again as Fluke was also ready at the side of the net. But as has been the case most of the evening, Fuji Magari comes up with a big save. You know, it's interesting you talked about Salander coming into this game and just how unbelievable she'd been for her prior club or her prior team, excuse me, in college. And um, it's Fuji Magari who's really stepping up for the Buffalo Buttes. And she's almost a stranger to these parts, originally playing for Worcester in the CWHL, as well as some hockey East time at the University of Maine. And now Buffalo going to go back out. Sheriff trying to run on run race with Fracken there. Couldn't quite get around her as she was stripped of the puck. And that's what Kaylee Fracken will also do so well. You try to go any way around her, she will block that way. She'll make you feel it, that's for sure. Again, another local product as Lookout could be a two-on-one or even a three-on-one for Buffalo. Here fired from the circle. Rebound comes out. Salander has the answer for all of them. And thought it was going to be a stoppage there with the puck again. Just flown right out. My goodness, and that puck was free, but it was Dempsey that was able to get the clear and help her netminder out. And right on cue, she has the puck in the offensive zone right here, trying to backhand it there around the likes of Birdsall. Couldn't quite get it to the middle. And I think Soliotis was looking for a penalty call as Dempsey did go down to the ice. No team will get one. Just over seven minutes to go now in period number two. Yeah, I think she took exemption to her captain being dumped onto the ice there. But the captain steals it back now. Again, a good centering pass. Good tic-tac-toe look there between Brand and Putinia. And a lot like Lang and Taves, I've seen the two of them connect on some really good passes, unlike that first pair just haven't been able to connect on the goal sheet yet. It'll come. You know, we're still early in this season, in this season five for the NWHL. Lots of new players, and, and you know, you got to work some of the kinks out. And here's some numbers for Boston as a shot fired there as a stick goes flying. And a couple shoves in front of the cage there between Ray Elton and looks like Bowering. Ooh, that was spicy. <laughs> and to mention that spiciness of physicality to the game, I don't know how many of our fans were looking on Twitter, but there was a little bit of exchange of uh, that some fisticuffs may come out in this game. <laughs> and I think we've seen the first taste of that. So the fans did get their promise to a degree, although it may not have been uh, the line brawl that was suggested. And that was delay that, that, you know, she pushed back with some authority and sent her stick flying. No delay in, in backing up Fujimagari on that play, that's for sure. And Boston able to win the draw in the offensive zone as they do go to the power play here with six and a half minutes to go. So for that little scrap, a Buffalo Buttes player in the box. And it will be Birdsdahl as look out, Buffalo, a good chance here shorthanded as a Kersey able to get that puck out of that original try by Bowie. The backhander went right in front of Solander and Bowie has it now behind the net, trying to turn away from a good check and now Boston will get control. So six minutes to go in period number two, the third power play of the night for the Boston Pride still have yet to score on it. Sam, I just feel like if it's gonna get done by Buffalo. It might be Kareem Bowie. She's really swarming in front of that net. We know she got the empty netter to close out the scoring last weekend. Think she wants to get it going for her team as the captain. And Soliotis, a good shot there as Parker once again going right in front of the net. She's been that staple on the power play, trying to jostle for room as again she almost gets it down low. 
but interrupted just a bit first there by Orzachowski. And now it's back to the point, Fratkin. So Leotis from the circle again, trying to find either Fluker or Parker. Rebound try as Parker had a wide open net, but lifted it just a bit too high. 46 seconds to go now. And here at the side, winding up a shot, went off of the post and rebound. So Leotis again, it was wide open. It looked like that was Sheriff that was able to come down on that far post because Fujimagari was out of position, but the Sheriff was in town to get it out of the way. A great hockey name with a last name like that. I just went with it. <laughs> and Wolfiler now takes the puck on her forehand, the final 20 seconds of the power play. She circles and changes positions with Fratkin. All the way back at the blue line, Fratkin. Now trying to break up a bit of that Buffalo traffic. Only goes off the pad there and just held in. What a good, oh, and I thought she had hold it in. Did Soliota, she saved it right there with her chest, but might have been just a tad over the blue line. Well, Otherwise could have been the defensive clearing save of the game. I'm telling you, Sheriff looks like a sharpshooter on that. You know, she was able to knock that out and you're right, just over the line. A little bit too slow there to, to keep that in. So we get, uh, but Boston is able to recollect here, Sam. And we're back to even strength hockey. Boston again, just that big O for Dratis again right at the side of the net. It was wide open. You had both Taves and Lang, the former goal scorers, waiting on the edge there. But Fujimagari quick to go left to right to cover that open cage. And 4.09 to go now in period number two. Still a Boston lead. Buffalo just trying to get some semblance of momentum on their side as Bustad sends it right in front of the net to Guillen, but she wasn't quite home. And striding up with it towards the end of her shift there was Taves, but now Buffalo collect trying to catch Boston napping. Another good stretch pass coming off of the bench there was McPherson, but that one goes high into the netting, so we get a stoppage. And a fan gets a souvenir. Still two to nothing, Boston Pride leading. We want to hear from you folks on Twitch. Who do you think gets the next goal? What team and what player? Which player? What team and what player? And if I had to pick my two for Buffalo right now as they win the offensive draw, it would probably be a deadlock between Sheriff and Bowie. Both of them have shown a very strong game defensively as well as Bowie rushing to the net with that big body of hers. Yeah, I think I gave away my answer earlier. I'm, I'm putting my money on Kareem Bowie. As Buffalo tries to work it up, Brooks Stacy had one of the goals in that Connecticut game earlier in the season but can't quite get it farther ahead. Now it will be taken by Birdsall. Trying to work around Putinia with the backhand. But they're going to say offside will the referee. And the faceoff will come back to the neutral zone. Looks like we have a vote for Kareen Bowie. And yep, we've got a few votes for Bowie. Folks at home think that Buffalo is going to get the next goal and that it's Bowie that's going to get it. And look at that. She's on the ice right now. And as we mentioned in the beginning of the broadcast, one of those original eight players who are still in the NWHL from all the way back in season one, Kaylee Fratkin being the other on Boston. Got has another early entry for the Buttes into the zone. Jillian Dempsey as well. Got a few players in this game. And this line is has been one of the most effective for the Buttes in this game, both offensively and defensively. That's a trio of Bowie, Akersi, and Bowering. Bowie and Akersi, of course, fans will remember they were with this Buffalo team last season, did a lot of damage also with the likes of uh, having Maddie Elia on the team. And it's definitely unfortunate losses for Buffalo, but the two of them picked up the slack very nicely. That's right, Maddie Elia, Kaylee Skamura. Um, Buffalo had a good team, but they fell short to the Minnesota Whitecaps. That game went into overtime, and actually the Whitecaps, congratulations to them. Of course, the reigning Isabel Cup champions and lifted their banner today at home at Tria Rink. As a Kersey, another quick shot there, fought off by Salander, goes into the corner now as Buffalo will try to clear down to the final 244 of period number two. Taves, big pass across to Sullivan, back into the middle, Bender couldn't get a backhanded pass as Taves was striding to the net as well. Recollected by Boston as Buffalo still not getting those charges into the offensive zone collectively. Forces Fujimagari out of her net. And held by Fratkin. She will be 
contend with just cycling that puck way down low. And Brand gets it off. We'll try to go to the front of the net, but now Putinha has it. Tries the backhand. Couldn't get a deflection from Brand there, who was right in the blue paint. And now again it goes down low. Good intercept, and Putinha shoots and scores. I don't know who at home had Putinha, but, uh, you know, winner chicken dinner there. My goodness, that was a rocket she sent in on Mariah Fujimagari, who got some of that, but it just was able to swing right past her and across the goal line for the third goal for the Boston Pride. And another great defensive play, as looking at it on replay here, it had been about three clearing attempts for the row, but that one was lost off the stick of Bowie, it looked like, and Putinia was just there to pick up the slack, and she gets the goal home. And although I didn't officially guess it, I won't take credit for this, <laughs> but I did say one was coming for one of the two of that brand Putinia combination, and she gets on the board with just under two minutes to go in the second period. There it is. So Christina Putinia, the former Providence captain over 100 career points in the NCAA a great accomplishment she has a quick shot off of the face off there was able to be fought off by Solander and this is where I will definitely give Buffalo credit for they've been sharp on the response shifts immediately following a Boston goal but still just haven't been able to get one of their own you feel it's coming one way or another that the Buttes are going to find a way to get on the scoreboard and this is also where I think you have to walk that very fine line between playing agitated, wanting to get back into this game, but also not playing undisciplined as a shot there by Peltier, fought off again by Solander as another one comes right to the top. Almost hit her in the mass there, but Lavisa Solander sees all. I think we're gonna have to start calling her the girl with the dragon pads. The girl with the dragon pads, I like that. Thought that was a good analogy given her last name. I like that a lot, you know, and you, you mentioned discipline. I wouldn't say that it's the Buttes playing undisciplined. I think they're just not able to really, you know, withhold and withstand, I should say, this attack from Boston. There's another good block shot by there defensively. Could have a three on two unless the Buttes come back to catch him. Send into the middle there for Tate. Shoots and scores! Again, a great attack off of the counter for the Boston Pride and make it a three-point night for Carly Taves out of UNH. With just 58 seconds to go in period number two, it is nearly a full handful, now a 4 nothing lead for the Boston Pride. And this is when, if you are the Buffalo Buttes, you really got to buckle down. Make sure you're focusing on the things that you can control. Control the controllables. I think what the Boston Pride have been able to do is any time that the Buttes put their head down, there's a pride stick, there's a pride body, a pride player in their face, just ready to disrupt. And still trying for more on the pride as they don't give up to the final whistle here. Lexi Lang trying to dump it in. McKenna Brand coming right off the bench, trying to win the race. Putinia almost had a forehand again as Fuji Magari makes the save. My goodness, she comes back you know, is able to, to catch up to the Buttes defender, looking to clear the puck, lifts the stick, and, and gets a shot on net. That's an amazing play by Boutinia. And again, we'll gain an offensive zone draw for the team. And it's interesting that I've seen this pride strategy. You don't always see off the faceoff circle. You usually see a three-pronged forward attack. But a lot of times, especially when they've gone to the blocker side of Fujimagari, I've noticed they've lined up four forwards all on the right side and no one on the half wall, which is an interesting face-off strategy, but it's worked wonders for the Boston Pride. And again, we'll have to see what the official shot total is at the end of this period, but I have to imagine it'll stay pretty strongly in Boston's favor. But it looks like the Buttes now are going to get a chance here with a player advantage as the Boston Pride get another penalty. And barring a late goal, this will carry over into the third period. And it will be McKenna Brand for slashing officially into the box. But now Boston trying to go three on two shorthanded as here's Mary Parker coming from the left wing, tried from a bad angle, went off of the shoulder of Fuji Magari there. And you talk about casting boats for 
our fans watching, I think my vote for next goal may just be Mary Parker if the Boston Pride do get one more, but that will do it for period number two. So a minute 35 of power play time will carry over for the Buffalo Buttes into period number three. And if there was ever a time to get one, it would be then as they are in a pretty deep. And welcome back in fans of the NWHL for the start of period number three between the Boston Pride and the Buffalo Buttes. Sam Fryman with you, Eric Ayala alongside me on Twitch TV. And the second period, Erica, was just the one the Buttes want to forget. Boston, they took that aggressive nature they had been applying throughout that first period. They kept their foot on the gas and then some in period number two and were able to get three goals, courtesy of Christina Putinia, Carly Taves, and... I think what we're going to have to see here, though, uh, for Sam, from the Buffalo Buttes is just it's a matter of how you want to play. What is the Buttes style of hockey that they want to establish this year? And it starts right now. It starts in this third period for them. And it also continues right now in the form of a power play as they will have a minute 23 of it remaining to start this third period. On a fresh sheet of ice is trying to get in, but stopped there and her progress was bowering boston with control of the puck they get it back to bender and she will lift it and all the way down the full length of the ice lexi bender wearing the a this year for the boston pride after a much improved season last year on the back end one of the team's most effective defense ladies in fact led that category among pride defensemen in assists as Bowie back in for buffalo trying to gain control in the final 52 seconds here from the half wall LTA down low to Bowering, trying to feed it back out in front. Bowering couldn't get to the low slot to get that pass from Bowie, and it will be taken away again by Boston and out to center ice. And in just a little too early were the Buttes there in the form of Klimasova. So the center ice face off, 36 seconds to go in the period down four nothing are the buttes and they could desperately use a go right here to get back in this game haven't been able to figure out lavisa salander yet and behind the net Guillen trying to get that puck has some help there also from stacy they're trying to bank it off of the half wall boston can't quite clear now taves battling for it almost lost control of the puck got into the center and lang will clear with the backhand all the way down ice and that should just about do it for the buttes power play And as the seconds tick away, indeed, the, the Buttes missed out on the opportunity here on the power play. Um, and so now we're back to even strength. And they are 0 for 2 now. Are the Buttes on the power play? Dempsey trying to get it from the half wall now. Again, trying to get a pass down low. Center down in front for the captain and just missing a wide open net. He lost in her skates. Carly Taves trying for her second of the night. But McKenna Brand picks it up. She circles with a lot of speed. Going behind the net, trying for the wraparound. Again, couldn't get a pass to Dempsey. But again, the Buttes cannot clear. Ratkin down low to Putina. She's also one of the pride goal scorers this game. Soliotis tees it up, goes wide of the net with that shot. 7.50 to go in the period. 17.50, I'm sorry. And finally, the Buttes just able to get that out. Plenty of tired legs on the ice, and they will get that full change. And that's where Boston has really been killing them with just the fitness level of tiring them out as that shot from Brand goes wide. Additionally, the pride are just able to make these changes that create opportunities for for their team and it they're always on the attack the buttes have been reacting I, you know if i had to guess you know a good 85 90 percent of this game the actors versus the reactors right now i think we can accurately describe it in the play as again Bowie almost lost in her skates parker trying to collect that puck but the buttes still with control and they will look to dish out fluke comes off of the bench and she will interrupt that passing attempt from bowering like you said erica they go right back in as parker from the circle almost got off a good wrist shot but in the way there was the stick of lima silva and brand again sends it around the board plenty of room for the pride to work again parker couldn't get a centering pass but she has been hungry all night right there in the low slot as well as the blue paint she will dish it as fluke battles there with bowering has no help from her teammates in picking up that puck. 
Bowering again trying to get it free, but the struggles continue and just the Buttes clearing it. They are able to do so there, but it was a workload for them, and you notice it in the change right there. Have to get all five players off the ice. They're tired. And again, you know, I said earlier that maybe the Buttes weren't making too many mistakes, but if I would single something out, it would be the passing. They're looking down so much on the ice, and they're not looking ahead. And as soon as they look down to shuffle the puck ahead, there's already a Boston Pride player there to pick it up. Trying to play more of a heads-up game as Fluke trying with some room. A wrist shot goes wide of the blocker side of Fujimagari. Again, a quick rebound, almost gotten there by Lang down low in the low slot. And where Buffalo has been ineffective with their passing, that's an area of the ice where Boston has been deadly effective so far this game, getting pucks to the low slot and right there in the blue paint. They always have someone waiting to attack. Always good interception there. Peltier has really impressed me. Um, been one of the Buttes players in addition to Fujimagari that has had a great game. I thought I saw the lights dimming a little bit here. And we have gotten a bit of lights dimmed at least on the media path the lights are pretty much completely out and on ice players still able to see plenty and able to play this game but they are definitely dimmer so don't adjust your computer screens if you're watching on twitch tv it is simply what has happened in the building but play continues now as the buttes have control mcpherson looking to take it up ice and going through center lima sova touches up trying to get a centering pass easily off of the right pad of solander there as we've got just under five minutes through period number three, Boston still leading 4 nothing and well in control of this game. Stapled against the boards there is Stacy. She's finally able to move it back as we get more of that lighting back now. Yes, mood lighting is gone, folks, on Twitch. And right off of those lights, McKenna Brand shoots and just off of the top post there. As she was looking to make the future even brighter <laughs> than the lights for the Boston Pride here. My goodness, and just to bring it full circle, someone is eating a chiplitch behind me, folks. I'm getting hungry. And the big hit there as trying to get that puck was a cursey from Dempsey. The two captains getting physical with each other. Again, a good centering pass there, but before Bowering could get a forehand on it, Solander covers. Solander seeing a little bit of action here. Didn't call her number or her name too much in the first two periods, but that's something that if the Buttes are going to want to get back into this, is going to have to change. Again, we saw a little bit of what they could do. They were able to push the, the puck forward, but they're going to have to keep that head up, make sure that they're being aggressive. As you said, Sam, as we headed into the second intermission, um, they got to be the aggressors instead of just absorbing the pressure that the Boston Pride is, is dishing out tonight. And I can't, again, can't quite be taken down low there. It was Guillen who tried to play that puck farther in. I'm sorry, Skarbowski. Got my numbers mixed up. There will be another draw in the neutral zone right in front of the Boston blue line. And definitely have to give a call to this line for Boston for the defensive work they've done. We've talked about Mary Parker all night, but I think going a bit unnoticed, Emily Fluke and Wolfiler has a two-on-one right on cue. Parker trying to get it to Wolfiler. And I'm not sure if that went in the net. A couple of players went crashing in, didn't quite see where the puck went. Oh, I know where it went, and so does Fujimagari. Glove and there side. I now see it, glove side. She she took a nice little uh, hit on the chin uh, from from the, the charge there, and then I think one of her players actually ended up in the net, but she was able to find the puck, and that's the most important thing. And having a good laugh about it there as had to adjust the net, make sure it's on his moorings, tugging at those posts, and all is good and confirmed. And so we will continue play. Fratkin. Cycles that puck down low. Fluke going to get it in the far side there. Met quickly by Sheriff. And she will try to get that puck out, but it's gotten back to the blue line. Fratkin trying to circle around. Takes a little shove there from Kim Brown. But Boston still with control. Just really effective at cycling these pucks around the edges. And now at the corner there, Parker tried to center it, but no one was quite home as Sheriff again puts it out, continuing her very strong defensive game as Brown dishes it back now for Guillen. She will try to get a shot off, but taken away just as quickly by Parker. She's back along the left wing. Now gets it to the center. Coming right in, Wolfheiler, a shot that was off the mark as we've got 13-13 to go now in period number three. Lauren Kelly holds that puck in and sends it down deep. Emily Fluke working with it, trying to get a backhanded pass free, and will do so. Back to Lauren Kelly and off of the bench, firing a shot, Lang just missing the wide open rebound was Fluke. 
And the juicy rebounds have come to the fried players all night. Fujimagari has been effective at stopping them, though. I'm very surprised that uh, Fluke couldn't corral that. It came, it popped right out to her, and she had a yawning net to, to score on. And right in front of the penalty box, a couple players trying to kick that puck around in their skates, and finally the Pride able to get it free, and it's just between Sullivan and Bender. Up the right wing now, Taves gets a couple stick taps there from Stacy, but she keeps control of that puck. Good bodying by the Pride, almost lost it there from the half wall, gets it back to Bender at the point. She tees up a shot, was waiting for a deflection from Sullivan, but couldn't get a backhand on that. And the Buttes, again, just can't stretch out when they get those clears, and Boston comes right back in. Here's Carly Taves from the circle, tries to drag that around, couldn't get the backhand free. Tried to do a little toe drag, I think wanted to go forehand, backhand there to try to beat Fujimagari. But Fujimagari anticipated that and disrupted, was able to pop that stick out and, and make sure that, that nothing, nothing too uh, dangerous happened right in front of net there. And just looking at watching the clock here, as thought that puck was going to go for icing. Fujimagari looked pretty confused, but in the last couple minutes, we've barely seen Buffalo even get beyond center here. It's but they're able to do so right now as Bowie comes in, almost worked her way around Mastel there, but now she gets shoved into the far side corner. Couldn't quite backhand that puck free. It goes beyond Bowering as we've got 11.30 to go now in period number three. Still a very safe lead for the Pride. And it gets free to Dempsey. She has some room for the circle. Wrist shot goes up high and shouldered away and into the netting from Fuji Magari. But if you give a player like Jillian Dempsey that much room, she's got the all-time goals lead in the NWHL for a reason. And I tell you what, space and time, that's all. I mean, that, they just have so much of it in Boston, that is. And that's something that the Buffalo Buttes have to clean up, absolutely have to clean that up. There's no excuses. Not only are they giving so much space and time to the Pride, or maybe that the Pride is taking it, but they're also getting handcuffed even on their offensive attack. And Bracken, they're able to get it down low. Mary Parker again trying the shot. Rebound comes free. Puck still loose. And now out to Soliota. She's at the top of the circle, trying to backhand it farther down low. Parker gets to it. She and Fluke play a little catch. Tried to backhand it right in front of the blue paint. Boston still buzzing. Bracken, that big slap shot. That goes well wide, perhaps intentionally. And Parker trying to get it in her skates again. Has it down low. Fluke behind the net. Almost takes a big shove there by Bowering. Might have been cross-checking if she had gone through with that. And these tired legs for Buffalo continuing to work to get that puck out of the zone, and now it goes into the middle. Bowering will just dump it in, and a full change again made for Buffalo. It's been same song, different verse with them. And now Fracken coming right, right back up, gets it behind the net as we're nearly at the halfway point here in period number three. Near side half wall, puck battled for. Mastel gets it farther up to Fracken, now down. Bracken again circling with it. Sullivan behind the cage. And that's where they've been doing a lot of their most effective passing in what you may call Gretzky's office, that trapezoid right behind the net. Which, of course, is not implemented here in the NWHL, but is on the ice because the Warrior Ice Arena serves as the practice facility for the Boston Bruins. And now Lexi Lang trying to turn there. And gets it back out to the point. Between there, Kelly and Whitney Wren. Hasn't had too many minutes on ice as part of the Boston defense, but she's been effective nonetheless as Buffalo finally able to chase it out. And going up is Guillen, almost takes a shoulder there from Wren, and she will circle around the boards and go to the far side half wall. Sheriff couldn't quite pick that puck up, and going right back the other way once again is Boston as Buffalo forced to make a change. Lauren Kelly coming in all by herself, in case a couple taps there from Busev, but keeps control of the puck. Great work, Lauren Kelly, but now it's tipped out of there, and look out, this could be a break. Stacy going, Boutinia trying to race the catcher, gets the stick in there, and takes a penalty. Brooke Stacy, head of steam, going right in to Salander, and we get a penalty here. And a great job by Putinia turning on the Jets. Hooked her right there in the wrist. Almost a play she needed to make. You never like to go into the penalty box, but there are a few situations where you almost have to take a penalty like that. And I believe we're going to get a penalty shot here as that was the only thing between uh, Brooke Stacy and the goal. And so Stacy here able to... Get a chance here. 
And Brooke Stacy won a silver medal with Canada back in 2014 at the World Junior Games. Here she goes, in on Solander, deking in and scores! So a ray of light perhaps for the Buffalo Buttes. They get an opportunity off a penalty shot. And it's Brooke Stacy, the 23-year-old, putting them on the board finally in this game. It's 4-1 with 9.07 to go. And to your point, before we got to that penalty shot, Sam, you know, that's what we would call in other sports and in hockey, I'm sure, as well, you know, a professional foul. If you don't make that foul, that's a, that's a breakaway. So you take your chances, you have some confidence in your goalie, but you make it a little bit more difficult on the opposition. And now the big question, can Buffalo turn this into big momentum on their side? Taken away just as quickly, but a glove save by Fujimagari, denying Dempsey. We saw how effective Buffalo was in those answer shifts um, off of those couple of Boston goals, and now it's time for the Boston to be the same thing as we go to our media break here. And back here is Buffalo able to take control off the faceoff. Once again, rimmed around the board. And it's taken away by Wolfheiler. Again, cycles it down low. Fluke looking for that centering pass, unable to get it quite taped to tape to Wolfheiler. And a Kersey will try to chip her away around Soliotis. She does so. Watching for the Pride players. Shoots it high, well above the glove side of Solander. Does Bowie. Able to get it back and almost in a tangle there with her teammates. As Birdsall will try to chip it in, chopped out of the air there by Fluke. Good defensive play. As Fluke now asking for it at center. She streaks in, tries to turn on the speed now, drops it off. A good pass back down low, goes to the side of the net, pokes away at it, puck came free. Very good shift there by Emily Fuke. She was asking for those couple of passes and had a great opportunity charging in on Fujimagari's net. As Buffalo again, Sheriff couldn't corral that puck out of the air. And Boston will take it back the other way. And again, those changes that you mentioned still being much more effective for Boston, and they're able to get more off of those sort of change rushes than Buffalo has been able to do. And that might be something that Buffalo really wants to focus on in the future. It's been so effective for the pride and not as much for the Buttes, Sam, to your point. And, you know, something's, something's got to give. We did see Brooke Stacy get them on the board, so we will not see our first shutout of the season as of yet. But... Still got to see more from, from the Buffalo Buttes. And the good thing about both of these teams, whether you've played well or whether you haven't played so well, you get the exact same opponent tomorrow afternoon to try to fix those mistakes. Indeed. Yes, we will be back here tomorrow afternoon. Sam and I on the call, back on Twitch TV. And Jillian Dempsey down low once again. A skipper that couldn't quite be centered. And now Buffalo, they will go back up ice. Stacy in over the blue line, looking to get a centering pass, perhaps to McPherson. Couldn't quite get it to her as a skipped across to the far side. And Puccinia having a little trouble clearing, but it gets through the skates there of Klimasova and down ice. And Buffalo again looking for that long stretch pass. They have all four of their forwards almost in a line there at center ice as a collision there. Between a couple of players, Boston takes it back in. McKenna Brand got a shot off, just went through this skates there of Skarbowski good defensive play as Rayalt another one again Skarbowski lost in her skates but she's had a couple good blocks on this shift 639 to go now in period number three still a 4-1 lead for the Boston Pride trying to win their home opener Emily Fluke on the half wall trying to get support from her teammate Mastel as a puck again stapled against the boards it's been the one spot the puck has had trouble moving out of 
Yeah, we've seen a few uh, a few uh, stalls there in the, in that on that board, I should say. And all along this far side, the puck is stalled now for the last couple of minutes, but now Fluke gets it free. And coming in is Rails. Another good block there by Skarbowski. Defensive shift of the game for her, I would say. And again, fans on Twitch, as we're coming down to the end of this game, your players of the game. There's been a lot of great candidates and certainly a lot of votes for the likes of Fuji Magari, perhaps Carly Taves, perhaps Lexi Lang. A couple of these Buffalo players, even though they haven't gotten on the scoreboard apart from the penalty shot, some great defensive games being played. Indeed, indeed. I, I, I mean, we know we've called out uh, Peltier. Of course, you have to consider Brooke Stacy. Uh, I think Kareem Bowie has had a pretty aggressive game for the Buttes as well. And circling around now is Guillen. She tries to get a puck through easily off of the left pad of Solander. But Bustad, a good defensive play to knock that out of the air. Keep it in. Almost a deflection right in front of the net as waiting was a curse. He again tried to be poked away at. But Solander covers on that attempt by Bustad. But let us know in the comments, folks, who are your three stars of the game? Right now we sit at 4-1 to one in favor of the home team, the Boston Pride. But anything can happen. 5-21 reads the clock. So we've still got some hockey to go. And a good aggressive setup from the Buttes there, but they're unable to win the faceoff. Soliotis lost it to Sheriff. She's another one of those Buttes players who's had a very strong defensive game as the Pride look to work back out. Down to the right wing. Carly Taze and Lexi Lang. Neither of them could get over the blue line and coming right back in. Guillen for the Buttes. A good game of back and forth right now and a good forecheck being applied as Delay. She chips it farther down low but had no teammates behind the net. Fracken will try to rim it around to the near side to get it out. Birdsall, she almost held it in for a bit. And now Sheriff, that pass deflected by Lexi Lang. She goes in. Near side half wall trying to get a centering pass. Has Sullivan going to the net now, but takes a big shove there. A couple fans wanted a penalty call. They won't get one as Brown going through the middle there as she was double teamed by both Sullivan and Brand. Buffalo's still struggling to get over that center line, but now they do so in the form of McPherson. She has a bit of room. Went off of the glove there of Solander. And it goes down into the corner. Butte's now creating some room, but again couldn't get a centering pass off, and that puck will trickle all the way down the full length of the ice. And needing to get three goals to get this game tied up. The Buttes now have just 4.06 to do so. As again, a puck intercepted. Gets to McKenna Brand. She takes a shot just high off the blocker side. Almost another centering pass gotten to her. Had she been able to corral that cleanly, she probably would have gotten a really good shot on Fuji Magari. But there was a little bit of traffic, some bodies bumping, congestion in the middle, and she just couldn't get enough on that. And Brand comes in again now. She's got Jillian Dempsey out there, one of her line mates. Back to Lexi Bender at the point. Through a bunch of traffic, only deflected high into the air. But Brand gets it back down. Again, working behind the cage with the Boston Pride. And again, cycled around for Bender. Lauren Kelly, she sends one through. Almost kicked off of the skate there. As Brand waiting in front of the net. Again, tries a deflection. Fujimagari keeping up with all these shots. 3.20 to go. Butte still cannot clear. Gotten back down low, but past McKenna Brand there. It will come to Becky Bowering for Buffalo. And just great defense as the Pride still just hold the Buttes at bay for these clearing attempts. And Kelly trying to take that along the half wall, and now finally the Buttes will get to center ice. A couple good stick moves there by Bowering as she tries to get one teed up, but interrupted there by a combination of Kelly and you just see how aggressive the Boston Pride have been all game as we were, you know, going to get an offside here. But I think one thing that you also see, though, from the Buffalo Buttes is that they were content to watch Bowering try to maneuver through, and she did as well as she could un until then you saw the Buttes saw her get a little bit too close to Solander for comfort, and they swarmed. But there's no Buttes players as an outlet there for her. And that's just been the theme all year, no support when the Buttes try to get in the zone. And I think it, again, may be that product of the Buttes not being able to clear because when they finally do so, the supporting players are practically too tired to get all the way up the ice and help their forwards out. Definitely a contributing factor. And here's Mary Parker chipping it in once again. Bustad will collect that for Buffalo before she can do anything dangerous with it. But again, Boston just holds it in. It's been all offensive zone pressure for the last few minutes. Back to the point, Rail shot intentionally wide. 
Goes off of the side of the cage. Bustan will again try to clear. Gets it into the center. Intercepted by Parker. Gets it back to Rail. She sends another bouncer through. Kick save there by Fujimagari. But Boston can still just circle and shoot at will seemingly. As Wolfheiler a shot there right into the chest. Fujimagari the save. She didn't get that cleanly, and it was McKenna Brand right there again looking for some scraps in front, but Fujimagari knocked it down to the ice and then was able to close up before Brand was able to get to that puck and perhaps poke it past her. But it's been like a literal shooting gallery as every rebound comes out. The Buttes can't quite clear, and the Pride just keeps circling like a pack of vultures and continue to fire those shots. But here could be a good chance. Klima Sova one-on-one there with Bracken. What a slap shot. She scores. And just like that, we get some action from the Buffalo Buttes. No, no giving up on this team, and that's what you want to see, you know? Uh, whether or not they're able to get another two goals like this is what you want to see and They're just fired what up. a shot that was by Klima Sova she had Fratkin right in front of her thought she was going to screen off any attempt she would make but she just lets that puck rip and Salander wasn't ready for it and with 142 to go in period number three this is suddenly a brand new hockey game shooters gone shoot Sam shooters gone shoot and Buffalo, you can see, they've definitely got a bit more energy on that bench. They were inspired by that goal. Pride going to have to be really controlled now in this final minute and a half. Puccini able to get it free to Fratkin. Bounces it off the wall and up ice. Brandt couldn't quite find it in her skates right in front of the Buffalo bench. And Pride still just trying to get it up and into the offensive zone. Dempsey and Putinia will do so. Putinia back to Brand Gets met by an elbow there. She falls to the ice, couldn't get a shot off. And again, that pass intercepted by Dempsey on that Buffalo clearing attempt. They cannot get these pucks out. Can the Buttes? And finally able to be chipped ahead. Not quite held in at the blue line. Plutinia will send one right back in as we're into the final minute of play here in regulation. If the Buttes get it up, we'll have to see whether or not Fujimagari comes to the bench. And a Kersey intercepts that at center, but again, can't quite get past. And sent back into the offensive end. Bowie trying to get something going, but has to corral right in front of her bench. Referee almost got in her way there as she takes a big shoulder there from Wolfheiler coming in. And I think Bowering took a bit of an exception to that, gave her a little extra elbow. But on the half wall now, Boston just trying to kill time as Fluke has it. We'll send it back up the half wall to Kelly. Big slap shot winds up. Rebound again comes free. Wolfheiler trying to poke. But they say that that play was dead. And so just 20.1 seconds to go. Fujimagari definitely under serious fire there. And going back to that uh, Kareem Bowie getting knocked down, she just did not see that hit coming. Uh, so she took exception, as did some of her teammates, to that. But, you know, not sure we're going to see Fujimagari be able to come over to the bench in favor of an additional skater just because, unfortunately, the Boston Pride have really not relented and, and they're not giving the, the Buttes any opportunity to really advance the puck. And Buffalo does call a timeout here to try to draw up a battle plan. Uh, unfortunately, they won't be able to start with six skaters as it will be an offensive zone draw for them. So for Boston, the game plan just has to be win this face off and as effectively as you can, just kill off these final 20 seconds. Don't do anything foolish. And just seeing in the chat, I apologize that the um, score ticker has been flickering just a little bit, but do want to assure you. Sam is on it. He's uh, tinkering right now, so hopefully we can get that going for you. And I do have the score correct on here. Apologies that it hasn't showed up. But the pride, they do win that faceoff. Fujimagari looking towards the bench as Buffalo is in the offensive zone, and they will bring her in now. Extra skater out, net open at the other end as Buffalo tries to get it down in the final two seconds here. But that will do it from Warrior Ice Arena. The pride take their home opener with a great defensive performance and just a dominant second period offensively where they were able to get three of these four goals. And the Pride 2-0-0 to start this season. Buffalo, they fall to 1-1-0. But it will be a matchup right back here in this same building, 2.30 tomorrow afternoon on Twitch TV. We thank all the fans who have joined us, and we will certainly look for some of the comments for uh, 
the players of the game, but first in this effort for the Buffalo Buttes, how can you talk about this game without mentioning the incredible job Maria Fujimagari did in net? Yes, absolutely. Fujimagari stood out, kept her team in this game, and it ends up being a two-point or two-goal deficit that they just could not overcome, but she had an amazing game. We'll hopefully get those shots, and we'll definitely talk about how many shots she faced tomorrow, Sam. Uh, I think there are a few other players. Uh, Peltier, I think, had a great defensive game. Bowie didn't get a goal, but was definitely buzzing for this team. And, of course, you have to mention Brooke Stacy for the Buffalo Buttes. But as far as the pride, Sam, who stood out for you? As the pride, as they do their stick salute at center ice, victory circle, as I like to call it. And it was really a line combination, I think, that really stood out to me. That combination of Lexi Lang, Carly Taves, and Mary Parker especially. She was between a couple lines, was Parker. But that trio just working together accounted for at least two of the four pride goals. And Parker, she had chances all night right in front of the net. And the passing they were able to facilitate between the three of them. Some of the best passing I've seen the pride had, even dating back to last season, I think. Yeah, they looked like a team that has been playing together longer than two games, that's for sure, Sam. And that will likely bode well for them as they move through the season. We're going to see a lot of double headers over the weekend this season and the fifth season as the schedule is extended. And chemistry is important in such a short NWHL season, even now that it's extended. Chemistry is so important. And we're getting the official stars of the game here from down low. Tori Sullivan being recognized as a third star. And Lexi Lang recognized as second star. And Carly Taves. Well, if you're going with the, the, the team that won, I suppose that's a good that's a good roundup, but to not have Fujimagari up there seems wrong to me. I think that is a bit of a disservice personally. Um, if you want to give a call for three stars for Buffalo, Fujimagari definitely on that list. Brooke Stacy, a very effective shootout goal, and I think Kareen Bowie just playing a very effective defensive and offensive game all game long didn't quite get on the score sheet and as I do have the final shot count in front of me 45 to 20 in favor of Boston so nonetheless a 41 save effort from Fuji Magari Lavisa Salander def definitely didn't quite have to do as much work tonight but able to get the victory for her team and again Sam let's recap those stars of the game officially as announced by the PA here in Boston and officially, that is third star Tori Sullivan from Boston. A good, effective game for her. One of the Lexi Lang goals. Second star, it was Lexi Lang, a multi-point night for her. And then one of her line mates again with a multi-point night. She gets the first star. That is number 26, Carly Taves, the official roundup. But a very good game of action here tonight. A 4-2 win for the Boston Pride rematch tomorrow here at 2 30 p.m and we hope you will all join us on twitch tv we hope you enjoyed the broadcast tonight so for erica ayala i'm sam fryman thanks for joining us on the call and we will be back tomorrow and with you on twitch tv for all boston pride home games we will see you next time